everyone and welcome to my channel where I talk about movies and today I'm going to talk about a recent Arrow video release um, in uh, September of uh, 2023. This is Unmin Wittering and Zygo. It's a movie from 1971 starring David Hemmings who's here on the cover you might know from Michelangelo Antonioni's uh, Blow Up and directed by John McKenzie. So this is the slipcase art, uh, which is duplicated on the physical release pack package, and uh, but it has uh, alternate uh, art, which I did reverse, and so this is the alternate art that's uh, included in the uh, in this release. And then there is a foldout, a large size foldout that I won't that I won't uh, <laughs> I won't, I won't attempt to fold out. Um, and it uh, basically replicates uh, both uh, this cover on one side and the alternate cover on the other side. It also comes with a very good booklet. Um, so this is a, a movie uh, set in an a, a English public school. Now, for, for those of us in, in the United States, public schools are where everybody goes to. <laughs> they're open to the public and they're they're, uh, they're free, but the public school in England, for those who don't know, uh, is, is, a, is actually what we would call a private school where you have to pay fees to go to. And it is a, uh, a system that even in 1971 was under attack, but it's still there. It's still, in fact, in the, one of the supplements it mentions that in Boris Johnson's recent uh, cabinet, two thirds of his, of his um, of his cabinet was, in fact, uh, uh, went to public schools. Public schools being the, the avenue for the privileged. Uh, this is where, the, where their boys uh, become men and uh, prepare themselves uh, uh, to lead the nation and, uh, when they grow up. And the premise of this film is really good. <laughs> David Hemmings plays this new teacher He's very idealistic. He spent three years in the advertising world. He, 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 his dream is to teach. Um, so a, um, a teacher has died in an accident, um, so, but midterm. So Hemmings is hired to, by the school to come and finish out the term. It's not a long term. He's hoping it's going to be, um, he's going to be offered the position uh, uh, full time, but for now, he's sort of he, he's he's uh, sort of the substitute teacher. <laughs> uh, so, in his in the, as soon as he comes in his classroom, it only takes a day for all his ideals to to uh, to, uh, to 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 disappear. I mean, uh, <laughs> when he the the premise here as he goes through the the roll call uh, of these strange names and Unman. Wittering and Zygo are, are alphabetically, they are the last of, uh, of the roll call, but it, it includes some very funny names, uh, Bungabite, uh, Cloister Mouth. <laughs> and, uh, but he learns that his predecessor, and this is in the first five minutes, uh, he learns his predecessor is, has not died of an accident, but is in fact been murdered. And who is the murderer? The class, the entirety of the class is the murderer. And they confess it right off the bat <laughs> uh, because they want to him to be scared uh, of what they're able to do. And, um, and uh, they know that if he goes to the headmaster and this got out, the reputation of the school would plummet so that it probably would, would have to go out of existence. <laughs> so. But he's not even sure, neither are we, is that this actually happened, it seems so, uh, we, it, it seems so uh, difficult to believe. So it's it, 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 a bit comic, it's very eerie, macabre, I guess is really the word for it, often very a atmospheric. Um, much of the movie is filmed in Wales and uh, near the ocean, so we have a cliff and uh, roaring uh, waves against the rocks. It is a study of, of evil, um, and you can't help but um, compare it to Lord of the Flies. Now, this was originally uh, 
a radio play in the, about 1958, Lord of the Flies had come out in 1954, and it caused a big sensation of the nature of evil. Are, are, we, are we by nature evil? <clears throat> and if uh, little boys are left on their own, will they become evil? Uh, a classroom, a classroom full of boys, soon to be men, the, the uh, students in this, this film are maybe 16, 17 years old, total lack of morality. Um, uh, what will happen to them? And, and this is part and parcel of, of the questioning of the value of the public school system and, uh, and what kind of people are coming out of this public school system. <laughs> and, uh, so, it, but it, the premise, uh, although intriguing, is, is rather you know, difficult to believe. Certainly David Hemmings, the teacher, has a hard time believing it. Kim Newman, who is one is, who's part of the commentary, says that he considers it more of a horror film because of this uh, element rather than a thriller. Um, what's going to happen to David Hemmings? Is the story really true, what these kids are telling him? So, like I say, this started out as a radio play, uh, and it was a very successful radio play. The radio play is on this on this release, the original radio play, and it's really good. I, I thought I would just sample it. It's a little over an hour. Uh, much of the dialogue comes from from the radio play. It was then part of a TV anthology series, um, and then uh, also adopted for the stage by. Uh, a, a writer named Giles Cooper. Cooper in the 50s and 60s was all over the place on television, radio. Um, uh, he he uh, uh, adopted so many different uh, um, novels. He had a lot of original uh, uh, radio dramas. Um, but he died tragically in, very, in a very bizarre situation where he fell off a train. Uh, in the late 60s, until so he wasn't around for the, for the filming. Uh, you know, this manifestation of his original story from the 1950s is now in 1970 being filmed. Um, but it was filmed, it was written by Simon Raven, who at that time was a successful uh, novelist. Um, he had attended a public school and, <laughs> and his children, and he sent his children to public schools. But he, he himself was... Uh, expelled from a public school because uh, of homosexual activities. Um, and so the psychology here, and I mentioned it's hard to believe the, the basic premise, although it's, it's so intriguing that you go along, I think, with, it, with, the, uh, with that premise. But the psychology all the way through this film is rather murky. It's hard to grasp exactly. <laughs> there's, there's all kinds of hints of different... Um, uh, there, there, uh, of, of different themes. There's a, a, a homosexual undertone uh, in the film that wasn't in the radio play. Um, uh, but again, it doesn't really it doesn't really play into the climax of the film. Uh, it's basically uh, about and and also David Hemmings his wife becomes a much more prominent uh, character in the film, and it's really about. Hemings is indifference. He quickly becomes indifferent. And, and this, I, I think this is supposed to be emblematic of the indifference that the, that the schoolmasters have for what's going on, the bullying, the sadistic nature of, uh, of the relationships of all these boys um, um, huddled together and, and uh, sort of being on their own and because they know that there's ultimately, they're not gonna get punished uh, because of their, their uh, they have important parents and the school needs more of these important parents to send their children to these schools. Uh, so the film uh, develops along this relationship between David Hemmings and his, and his wife, which is very strange. Uh, again, he's sort of indifferent to her plight to, a, to the max, really, in, the, in, in one of the climactic scenes. And there's a sense that, that perhaps he is impotent, uh, that he, has, he is homosexually attracted to the boys. Um, <clears throat> but again, this is not, 
it's it's none of these themes are kind of developed very well. The director John McKenzie is only his second film. He also came out of uh, television, um, uh, and he made a number of films afterwards. He was basically a television director, but he did make. Well, I guess his most famous film is The Long Good Friday, which I think starred Bob Hoskins. It's a real creative talent behind the scene, behind the camera. Is the cameraman himself, Jeffrey Unsworth, and. This was, must have been, as they mentioned in the commentary, this must have been a real coup to get Jeffrey Unsworth. This is a low-budget film. Unsworth had photographed 2001 a couple of years before. He would soon be in Hollywood and filming Cabaret. So, the and it shows that, you know, they've got a top-flight cameraman here in the way he lit some of the scenes. Uh, in the, the atmosphere, they, they do have some scenes in the forest and the, the woods surrounding the school, the cliff side, the danger of the cliff. Um, Hemmings was also the producer of this film and uh, he would soon uh, become, he would soon be uh, form a, a production company called Hemsdale that uh, produced some very significant films. And here he is with the indifferent, uh, Headmaster, <laughs> who doesn't want to hear nothing, when he says, "I, you know, I've heard these strange. Oh, I don't want to hear none of that." That, that, yeah. Uh, and uh, Carolyn Seymour plays the. Uh, and here is Hemings doing what he really wants to do, in real life too. Uh, tragically enough, uh, is is drown his his indifference in alcohol. Uh, Carolyn Seymour plays the wife. She looked very familiar to me, although I couldn't really place her. She was in a number of other movies. In fact, she comes to um, to the U.S. and, and has uh, appeared on many, many different uh, television shows. I didn't recognize any of the boys except for one, and that's this that's this fellow right here. That's Michael Kitchen, and for U.S. he's 22 years old when he made this film, and. For U.S. audiences probably will know him if you've watched uh, Foyle's War, which was a World War II era uh, domestic uh, uh, film um, or a television series in the early 2000s. Uh, so we get some really good supplements here. We get an appreciation of the film by a film historian Matthew Sweet that runs about 20 minutes. Then we get <clears throat> interviews with three of the boys. This, these are recent interviews. Um, not Michael Kitchen, however. But also with Carolyn Seymour, and her interview is really interesting because she discusses the um, uh, a very nasty scene. In fact, I hadn't thought I would saw this film until I saw that scene. I remembered that scene because it is very nasty. Very, very uh, 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 the lighting is, 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 is very much part and parcel of, of the horror film genre. But she talks about it as she's the only female around. You know, this is all male cast other, otherwise, and every, all the males behind the scene. And this was a very difficult scene to film. And when you see the film, you can understand why. And how much, how little, and she discusses how little agency uh, uh, actresses had in 1971. They had to, <laughs> they had to do you know, whatever the director told him to do. Although she said she was not that uncomfortable in the making of the film. She felt safe in the hands of the, of the director. But it certainly was the kind of scene that in 1971 hadn't been filmed very often before. Um, we also get a, uh, a, uh, a very good commentary, as I mentioned, Kim Newman and uh, Sean Hogan. And they talk about all the various uh, all the various uh, in, uh, incarnations of the film, of, of the original radio play, um, uh, which I really enjoyed. I, I started watching it and I watched the whole thing. So overall, this is a real oddity, I, I, I think, for people who have, uh, it, it certainly falls into the horror genre, but also falls into the boarding school genre, which is certainly a kind of genre that, that continues, a subgenre, I suppose, it continues on to this day. Okay, thanks a lot for everybody who managed to listen. I do appreciate it. Comments are welcome. Take care.